Do not do this. If you were buying this guitar or you want a better guitar, well, let's just face the facts here. There are a lot worse things you could be doing with your money. Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian Bauer, and today we are going to be upgrading my Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. So if you are new around here, click the subscribe button, and no matter who you are, click the like button right now as well. It really does help when you are clicking the like button on the videos for the YouTubers that you like. It really helps us in the algorithms and all that stuff. And uh, like people like me and uh, Lee Armitage and doesn't matter who they are, big or small, click the like button when you like stuff. It takes about one second and it really helps us out. So today I'm going to be upgrading this Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 and I'll be taking you along for some of the journey. So I've got a set of locking tuners I'm gonna put on this because one of my main complaints was that it goes out of tune a little bit. Pickups maybe are a little weak. I think you can get away with them, but I'm gonna be changing those out to a set of DiMarzio Crunch Lab liquefiers why you might ask because they're sitting in my house i'm not really spending more money to do it these cost a little bit of money they're locking tuners they are grover 502c it's a three and three set just like les paul locking tuners usually help with some tuning stability or at least make your string change a little bit easier also i'll be polishing the frets hydrating the fretboard little things little setups and stuff you know your new strings all that stuff I nicely broke a string when I was starting to record for this video. I'm not changing it back, but hey, whatever. Now, I know how YouTube works. Most of you guys drop off the videos really quick, so I just wanna say this right now. If you are getting a guitar like this, don't worry about upgrading parts and doing all that kind of stuff. Get the guitar set up. If the guitar is set up properly for you, it's going to play a lot better. You're gonna to like to play a lot more instead of having an action this high you want the guitar intonated so it's in tune all the ways up the neck the best that it can be that is going to matter a whole lot more than spending money on other parts so yes get a setup no don't do what i'm going to do unless it's just a practice platform for you and there's a billion options i just want to put that disclaimer out there so right now it's time to get the strings off this thing the tuners off this thing the pickups out of this thing we're gonna start polishing the frets and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to work. All right, so first up, I had to take the strings off the guitar. They were old and grungy. They were sitting under a heat pump and well, I never wiped them down or anything. This was my living room guitar. So use a string winder, kids. A little lesson for you, get a string winder. I should really get one for a drill. As you can see right here, I was struggling a little bit getting the string out of the tuner. Here's the tail piece of the tunematic bridge. Put that to the side. We are going to need that when we put the strings back on it. Do not lose this. All right, time to take the old tuners off of the guitar. The tuners were the main complaint that I had when I did a review of this. Uh, they just don't hold tuning that well. They get loose, they're cheap. It's a corner that Epiphone has to cut. It's a beginner model, what do you expect? All right, now it's time to get the back plate off the uh, electronics cavity for this guitar. I wanna take the pickups out and in order to do that, we don't just start by taking the pickups out from the front side of the guitar, we have to get into the back. So first off, I needed to figure out what the deal with the wiring was. So I grabbed my soldering iron and figured out what we had to disconnect. I don't think it was super hot. Obviously it was working. Now, one of the things you guys need to keep in mind that if you're just swapping out the pickups, you don't have to disconnect all the other wires from the output jack and whatnot, just the pickups from the switch and from the grounds. I really should get a better soldering iron, but hey, I don't solder a whole lot. Soldering is not my favorite thing in the world, but sometimes you need to fix something up or do something, so I've got this one. As you can see, I'm trying to figure things out and look around and struggling with it a bit. Okay, see this? There's the output jack. If that little nut is loose, don't just tighten it on the guitar. I did this on my first one. If you tighten it without taking it off, you're just gonna twist the wires off the snap and you'll have no sound. This is really easy to do. Hold on to it, tighten it up, get a little wrench, and uh, tighten it up a little bit more. As you can see here in a second, and screw it back into the body. It's really easy. Ah, got a solder sucker here. Not a great solder sucker, but we're gonna get those little connections unsoldered, 
we're not looking to do anything fancy here. Just get them loosened up. Solder's gone. Disconnect it. Time to take off the pickups. Uh, okay, we are going to unscrew the pickup rings, put those to the side. We are going to be using those for the new set of pickups later on. Keep track of those screws, and we're taking those out. There's a lot of little holes in the body to route wires through and whatnot. Okay, that's disconnected. All right, the Daydario fret polishing system. Super great because you don't have to tape off the board. This is the first time I've ever polished frets. Thank you to Peter Fredlin for giving me this suggestion to try this out. It's a great system. So set up the template with the cardboard. If, if it gets worn out, just make a new one. Um, anyway, we're gonna rub those frets down and I really think they did a great job. I did it always up the board. Okay, time to put some lemon oil on this fretboard. All fretboards need maintenance once in a while. Uh, they get dry and you need to hydrate the board. So this is lemon oil, but you can get Dunlop stuff that probably is better, but this has worked great for me. I really just need to get some oil on that board and clean it up a little bit. Okay, time for the tuners. Here's where we start to have fun. Look at that. It doesn't fit in the hole. Eh, well that sucks. So, you know what we're going to have to eventually do. Look, I had trouble getting out the old metal piece on the other side. Sorry, I don't know the name of that. Hey, what's going on? Future me here. And this is the other reason I don't recommend this project. So, to install the Grover 502C tuners, I had to use this drill and the largest drill bit. I had to fit the tuners into the holes. They weren't a direct swap. Now I saw a video where a guy did it with a Gibson SG and it was a direct swap. If you have a Gibson and you've done this, uh, confirm with me in the comments. However, this is why I don't recommend doing this project because you can screw your guitar up and then you need a whole new neck. Now on the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2, it is a bolt on, but I highly recommend if you're a beginner, just playing your guitar, okay? So don't get this sucker out and you wanna be confident if you're gonna do this. Um, I had to struggle a bit, uh, and it was really tight to get those tuners in through the tuner holes on the headstock. I was pushing, and then the little screw hole on the tuners don't line up. And the stock tuners have two screws, and the Grovers have one. So that meant pushing the tuners around a little bit, lining them up, and then I had to take a very small drill bit and drill the hole out and now we can get back on to the regular programming also this is a really nice drill and i highly recommend picking one up sometime uh canadian tire usually has a pretty decent sale once in a while comes with the batteries okay it's time to put the pickups into the pickup rings i always struggle with the springs tabs and the screws you can get little tools to help you out with that uh, and keep in mind that the thicker pickup ring is for the bridge and the thinner one is for the neck pay attention to that Okay, it's time to set these into the body. As you can see, the screws here are too long. I have to snip the end of these off in order for it to sit in flush with the body. Pretty easy, just have a good pair of pliers that will cut the metal. The metal and the screws are pretty soft. Uh, I also use the Epiphone springs again because the Demarzio strings are a pain in the butt. But anyway, I'm typing off the wires now to get it through the holes. I don't want to damage the end of the wires and that matters because we need the wires to be in good shape so i'm routing this through the body now pretty easy at this point i also put an extra piece of tape on the bridge pickup so that when i, when I flip this guitar over that i can tell what set of wires is for what pickup now the pickups are mounted into the body it's time to solder them into the circuit tin your wires first this is a really simple job this is only a three-way pickup switch a volume and a tone Demersio pickups are very simple. Green and bare goes to the ground on the volume pot. White and black get soldered together and taped off, and red goes to the pickup selector switch. The tab closer to you is where the bridge pickup goes, that red wire, and the red wire for the neck goes to the one that's a little bit further away. I'm not the best at soldering. It takes some practice. I highly recommend trying it out sometime. It's really not that difficult. Now for the moment of truth. Since we don't have strings, I tap the pickups with a screwdriver. As we can tell, it works. At this point, I wasn't sure if it did work, but when I plugged it into the guitar amp later on with strings on it, it definitely did. 
Now it's time to get the wires back into the cavity and the plate screwed back on. We kept track of the screw, so it's no problem. Just be careful not to bend your wires too much. Time to string up this guitar with a set of Day Dario 0.9 to 46 gauge NYXL strings. I really like these strings. They last a long time. I don't know what the Dario is doing with these, but I have been using them for a few years now and I absolutely love them. Stringing up with locking tuners is one of the easiest things you could ever do. Just loosen up the knob on the back, push the string through and tighten it up. Just keep the string tight. Remember, you don't have to wrap the string around the post. Also, we're going to cut these strings off as I ain't no grunge band. All right, now the guitar is done, man, and it looks awesome. I think the DiMarzio pickups make it look really great, and the tuners just, well, fit this body so well. Just that overall look, the aesthetic, I really like it. And on top of that, they feel really high quality and really great. Obviously, you see a few holes here, but hey, that's going to happen. This is a project guitar, but it stays in tune awesome. Who cares? Look at that some beautiful DiMarzios. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? We are back with, well, the upgraded Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. Now, to start off, I didn't really know how this was going to turn out, if it was going to be hard, easy, or whatnot. It took me a while to get around to doing it. I did a bunch one day, and then it took me a month to get back to actually finishing it. And, well, today I succeeded with that, so the tuners. I didn't expect to have to drill the holes. I don't know what it'd be like on an actual Gibson, but in this case, I had to drill them out. The posts aren't as long, so that seemed a little weird, but I've had no problems with it so far, getting strings in and out of there. I have to say with the tuners, I'm super impressed. They feel amazing. Uh, and they're locking tuners, so that makes the string change really nice and easy. The tuning stability feels a whole lot better too. Mind you, I did put new strings on it. Um, yeah, a little set up and we're back in business. And like I said at the beginning of this video over a month ago, do not do this. If you were buying this guitar or you want a better guitar, don't spend all the money on these pickups and all that stuff. For the price of these pickups, you could put that towards a better Epiphone or better something else. Same with the tuners. In fact, you have to drill the holes out. I do not recommend doing this. This is just something, a little project that I wanted to do. If you're a new guitarist, you don't need to be wasting your time doing this kind of stuff, okay? You need to be playing. So if you want to upgrade your guitar, just get another guitar. Keep this one the same. I will say this particular one has a lot of potential. It sounds great and plays really good. So absolutely no complaints there. So if you've got any questions or anything, just put them in the comments below. This is just a fun project. I wanted to take you guys along for the ride. So 
you know, click the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell and all that kind of stuff because it really helps us out. And if you like this kind of content, well, I don't know if I'll be upgrading any guitars anytime soon, but if you wanna see me doing a setup or doing some little things on time, I suppose, let me know. You guys have an awesome day and I will see you guys all next time. Peace.